a float and thermostatic. And it's one of my favorite traps because it's versatile and it has great capacity. So let's take a quick look at this one. A float and thermostatic trap basically works by ri the float rising on the entrance of water, which opens our valve seat and allows that water to exit the outlet. So this trap will remove condensate as soon as it forms. And the second part of this trap, the T or thermostatic component, is also great at removing air. So this trap would be a great trap for start and stop processes like kettles. This trap would be good for drip legs on low pressure systems because they have a large capacity and with a very low differential can remove condensate quickly and efficiently. And it's great when we've got large loads in general. So let's take a quick look at our steam skid here and look at how it operates there. So here's a float and thermostatic trap in operation. Right now the level is being maintained by this float. It's opening, allowing condensate out at essentially the same rate that condensate's coming in. Um, the thermostatic element, I've got valved out, so we can momentarily see the benefit of that on this trap. When I open the valve on the thermostatic part of this trap, we'll see the exit of air from the system. So you can see a sudden rush of additional capacity through the trap, and that's the result of the thermostatic element allowing the air that's trapped in the heat exchanger out. That's what makes it great for start-stop operations. We're gonna follow up on the float thermostatic trap and let's talk about troubleshooting that style trap. Uh, firstly, if a trap is cold with the control valve open and all of our valves verified as open, there's a good chance that that trap has failed closed. So some people will assume that if a trap is hot that it's working correctly, but that trap could in fact actually be blowing through. So how can we tell if a trap is blowing through? Well, with a float and thermostatic, if the trap is working properly, it should always have a water level in the trap. Um, it's easy to look at this trap and see the water level. We don't have that benefit in the field. So we can actually use a temperature gun to tell that there is a water level inside the trap, which will tell us subsequently that it's not failed open. So what I'm going to do is take a temperature reading on the side of the trap, and what I should see is a higher temperature where there's steam inside the trap, and a lower temperature where there's condensate in the trap. So we'll demonstrate that. What we see when we take that measurement is about a 30 degree difference between the portion of the trap that's filled with steam and the portion of the trap that's filled with condensate. Now, if we've got a heavy load on a trap, it may take a while for that trap to come up to temperature because the trap may actually be undersized on startup. But once we get up to an established running mode, um, we're, we should have steam in the top half, condensate in the bottom, and we should be able to see that difference with the temperature gun.